On the afternoon of Monday, 2nd of November, 1869, a beautiful little clipper ship of 963 tons was launched from Scott and Linton shipyard in Dumbarton on the Clyde. She bore a name that was to become famous throughout the world and was destined to win a place in the hearts of British seamen. Her name, the Cutty Sark. The Cutty Sark sailed for the last time in 1938. In 1954, she was towed around the coast and up the Thames to be placed in a specially constructed dock close to Greenwich Naval College, in which she still sits today. The ship was named after Cutty Sark, the nickname of the witch Nanny D in Robert Burns' 1791 poem, Tam O'Shanter. She is seen in the stark white figurehead, snatching Tam O'Shanter's horse's tail before he escapes by crossing water. Badly damaged by fire, on the 21st of May 2007, while undergoing conservation, the vessel has been restored and was reopened to the public on the 25th of April 2012. The restoration saw her raised up three meters from the dry dock, seemingly now floating on a glass wave. Built as a tea clipper with two massive cargo holds, the Cutty Sark sailed between the Far and Middle Easts and her home port of London. During the 1870s, there was great kudos in being the first ship home with the new season's tea. The Cutty Sark had been built specifically to win this race and to challenge the Theomoplia, which at that time was regarded as the fastest vessel. Her early years under her first master, Captain George Mooney, saw some sterling performances. Fate was to thwart her owner's hopes of glory in the tea trade. In the very same year of her launching, the Suez Canal was opened, allowing steamers to reach the Far East via the Mediterranean, a shorter and much quicker route not accessible to sailing ships. Their freight eventually fell so much that the tea trade was no longer profitable, so Cutty Sark's involvement in the China run was short-lived, her last cargo of tea being carried in 1877. The ship's heyday was in the Australian wool trade, and yet by 1895 she was again no longer making money for her owners and was unceremoniously sold off to the Portuguese and renamed the Ferreira. She had a crew of around 30, all accommodated in deck houses on the upper deck. All had bunks and lived in comparative comfort. The officers were accommodated in the wardroom below the poop deck. They lived a much more comfortable life. Once on the poop deck, 
Standing by the wheel, gazing forward and upwards, it's not difficult to imagine the great ship at sea. Roaring through the water at full speed, wind and spray blowing into your face, with a bow wave creaming away on either side and the great sea rolling astern. Looking aloft, the towering mainmast stands at 152 feet. With sails set on all three masts, there would have been 43 sails, equivalent to the area of 10 tennis courts or 32,000 feet of sail, all controlled by 11 miles of rope and rigging. Raised up from its dock, visitors can now admire the graceful lines of the copper-covered keel of this once greyhound of the seas. This gives a whole new perspective and really shows the size of this vast craft. Raising the ship allows the dock bottom to be used for exhibitions and the display of collections such as the largest collection of ships figureheads in the world.